and welcome back to another video and this one probably relates to one or two videos ago when I was going to a car meet and my old track decided to not be my workhorse for once she decided to start hesitating bucking and just kind of quit working with that said I am pretty sure it is the catalytic converter because back when I first got the car on the road, it was running pig rich. Could not pass emissions when it had to. And I finally got that fixed, but it was still running kind of rich. High flow cat. The place I installed it said, you know, you'll probably get like two years out of it. This has been like four or five years ago. And I think it's finally clogged. So we're gonna give you a cold start. We're gonna pull it in the garage. And then we're going to remove it and see what things look like inside and at worst case still gonna physically remove and put a test pipe in place because the car doesn't need emissions anymore so with that said let's see what she sounds like and move her into the garage And you probably can't really see me in that camera, but here we are. I'm going to just assume this thing is to blame. So what we're going to do is unbolt this flange that you can't see over here and unbolt this and remove the catalytic converter piping here and actually look in here and see if we can actually see through the honeycomb. Now, whether that honeycomb is there or not afterwards, who knows, we'll figure it out. But with that said, let me get to work. Bright light and exhaust. So I'm gonna try and show you what I'm pretty sure I've already come to the conclusion is that I do not think the pipe was my problem. I mean, I'm still gonna, you know, do some modifications, but if I can show, the light, cause I have the camera now, just the lens is kind of crammed in there. And I feel like you get the gist that the, Catalytic converter is not clogged. You know, so I may have lost a horsepower or two. So I'm trying to figure out if it's worth the hassle to uh, modify my car. But yeah, you can get the gist. And let's see. Yeah. I seriously doubt this is the problem. Which, you know, I think all of us hate doing work that didn't need to be done. But, you know, sometimes you can make improvements. Let's get that out of the way. So, yeah. This, just so you guys know, because uh, is in one of my old... No, I don't think I have a video on it. This pipe was part of... An Amazon special exhaust for all tracks for the ST185. Those exhausts do fit the 165. I took the car to an exhaust shop. My car was not at the 30 year mark yet. Yeah, so I had to pass emissions. And it just for it it was running pig rich until I found the actual problem. But I did put a cat on it to try and help it. That did not, that was not the reason it passed emissions, but I haven't really felt the need to modify it since then. So yeah, that's where we're at. But I guess we will uh, actually investigate a little further onto why she became a little pain in my butt when I tried to take her to a car meet. 
There was no check engine light, so that threw me off. I will probably get her started, get her fully warmed up, and see if she reproduces the issue. Yeah, I don't drive her very often, so I hadn't seen an issue, like, ever. But I'll be back when I uh, get her seated back on the ground. Cold start. <laughs> running doesn't really sound all that different somewhere in this process it regurgitated all of its power steering fluid I kind of figured the rack was probably gonna do that but it did it even though I hoped it wouldn't with that said I don't think I'm gonna be able to pinpoint the issue right now what I'm probably gonna have to do put another gauge or two on the stereo, let it idle and fully warm up, and see if any of the ECU values, like that cooling temp or something, see if that starts going wonky, and maybe that will tell me something. I don't know, because yeah, the behavior it displayed the other day, not acceptable. But, just because we're here, you know, she's looking okay. I cleaned her not that long ago, or at least a little bit looks okay. You know, for my work and the engine being put in and all that jazz. With that said, let's go see what the values say on torque. Well... First, we're going to have to turn off some music. Well, my definition of music. So it should connect fairly quickly. Let's find out. So, Let's see if I can get a slightly better shot of this. Probably not, but... So we've got intake temperature sitting at 84 degrees Fahrenheit right now. Throttle's 10%. Vacuum is 10 HG whatever. Coolant is currently... 148 degrees Fahrenheit. Revs is at, you know, 800 or higher. You know, somewhere up there. Voltage, you may not be able to read it, is at 14.5. So, um, I thought I used to have a because swore I used to have lambda, oh wait, no, never mind. Yeah, O2. So bouncing between zero volts, one volt. So I'm gonna let this sit and I'm gonna time lapse it. So enjoy whatever music I find. But we're gonna see, and I'm just gonna let it keep idling until it hits around 200, the normal operating temperature. And we're gonna see if any of this kind of goes weird. So yeah, I will be back.
proper operating temperature. I believe the thermostat opens at 185. And yeah, I mean, everything screams out fine. You still have, she's in closed loop. So you see the O2 bouncing back and forth. Intake temperature for being in my garage is still fine. Vacuum has went up a little, but I don't know. At least when I've driven her or yeah, in the past, I mean, she sounds good, but yeah, nothing on the gauges are screaming out. I do not have a check engine light still. So I think the next thing I'm gonna have to do is, yeah, take her for a spin and see if putting a load on her will work. But when she misbehaved before, there was no load. Like, you know, okay, when I took her off the freeway and just let her idle, I would try and rev her and she wasn't having any of that. So, oh, and just for giggles, let's check if there's any fault codes. Because, you know, why not? We're here. Transmission. Transmission, transmission. Yeah, it's all... Let's let it finish, I guess. I mean, transmission codes are all expense, expected. I have an automatic ECU and a manual car. Yeah, that's not going to work. Or that part isn't. So, anywho, uh, once I can get the car moved out of the garage, I will take it for a spin, probably record some of it, and we'll go from there. See you in a little bit. So, this video had a plan of, you know, ironing out how why she started running weird and stuff but then she decided no it is time to work on her rack and pinion and i have decided well that's gonna wait a little bit so i am not sure and i will keep saying so <laughs> but let's see if you can see so yeah she is dropping around middle back of the engine. I'm not sure exactly where because I am pretty sure it is hitting the north south cross member. So it's probably the leak point is a little skewed. With that said, any Anyone who's watching this who is familiar with the all tracks and the rack and pinion, is there anything middle of the rack and pinion that could be leaking? I don't think it's a high pressure line. It could be the return line. I don't know. When I looked at it yesterday, when the car was off, it's just drip, 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 drip. <coughs> Mm. So, I mean, it could be from the rack, could be return line, could be something. All I know is I topped off the reservoir and it just spewed it out. Pretty much shortly after starting, all the fluid was gone. No appearance of spray. Everywhere it's marked appears to be a very small origin of where everything's being dripped. And that's it, being dripped here and just spreading. Anyone with experience on these racks and on the power steering systems, 
If you could let me know, I'd much appreciate it. Because whether I keep this car long term or not, as long as I have it, I want to drive it. And not having power steering really kind of sucks. I will continue to look for more info. I think you can get those rack and pinions if that's what I have to do. Give me any info you can. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Bye-bye.